Today we're remembering Ajahn Suwat, the founder of the monastery. He died 22 years ago on April 5th. And it's always good to remember him because without him we wouldn't have this monastery, we wouldn't have this opportunity to practice. It's good to remember his teachings, it's good to remember his example. He was a person who embodied the Dharma in many ways. And he wanted to make sure that we embody the Dharma too. One of the things he stressed again and again and again is that we practice the Dharma in accordance with the Dharma. In other words, not in line with our own preferences, but in line with what the Dharma actually is. So what does the Dharma teach us? It teaches us virtue, concentration, discernment. The virtue there is the basis of everything. If your virtue is not strong, you try to build concentration on top of that and discernment on top of that. It's like building a, a building where the foundation is weak. No matter how pretty the stories may be above it, when the foundation is weak, they're all going to fall down. So you want to make sure that your virtue is pure. And he stressed especially our speech. You notice that people here in America are very careless in how they speak. Anything pops into their minds, it just goes out their mouths. Of course, this isn't just here in America. But it seems to be more here than other, other places. He constantly said, that's the sign of a, a fool. You think you've got an idea, you're proud of the idea, and it just comes right out. You've got to examine it. It's like getting money. You look at the money carefully to make sure that it's genuine money before you try to use it. So what kind of speech do you have? Is it just wooden speech? Is it copper speech? Or is it gold? You want only the gold to come out, because then that becomes your karma. It will have an influence on you and an influence on the people around you. So examine your words. The Buddha gives three tests. One, is this true? You want to make sure that everything comes out, out of your mouth is true. Secondly, is it beneficial? Because there are a lot of things that are true that are not beneficial. So you have to ask yourself, is, does this really serve a good purpose to say this? All too often we just think that we can speak in line with our moods. We have to get something out. We feel that we're bottled up inside if we don't say everything that we want to say. But you have to ask yourself, why do you want to say it? Because after all, this is the whole purpose of the practice, is to turn around and look at our wants, which, which of our desires are ones that we should go with and which are ones we shouldn't. Just because a desire comes in doesn't mean that it should have power. So look for things that are true and beneficial. And notice, the, the Buddha never says that anything can be beneficial if it's not true. Sometimes we say, well, it, I'll say something false so to avoid hurting people's feelings. But after a while, they begin to suspect that something is up, that they can't trust you. And that way your speech becomes, even if you're handing out gold afterwards, nobody believes it's real gold. So make sure it's true and beneficial. And also look for the right time and the right place. As the Buddha says, you want to, so there are times when it's the right time to say gentle things, and the right time when to say, say things a little bit more harsh. Someone once asked him if he would say displeasing things. They meant it as a trick question. On the one hand, if he said that yes, he would say things that were displeasing to other people, then the answer would be, well, response would be, well, what's the difference between you and ordinary people on the market? But if he said he wouldn't say things that were displeasing, they had him on record for having said things about David Dutta that David did, Dutta didn't like. So it's not that saying, so the Buddha, <coughs> excuse me, but the Buddha avoided the trick question by saying, well, there's no categorical answer to that. And then he gave an example. Suppose you have a child, and the child has gotten something sharp in its mouth. What do you do? You hold the child's head with one hand, and with the other hand you take the finger and you put, go into its mouth and get that sharp object out. Why is that? Because the child could swallow it, get into even greater danger. So for the sake of the child, sometimes you have to draw blood. In the same way, the Buddha said, there are times when you have to speak harshly for people for their own good. But you have to be really, really careful that it is something that they will benefit from. What this means is that you've got to examine your speech before you hand it out to other people. Make sure that it's genuine gold. And keep on handing out genuine gold. That's for things that are just paper or, or trash. You don't need to say it. You don't have to bottle it up inside. Just let it disperse. Think of it dissolving away in the air. In this way you're practicing the Dharma in accordance with the Dharma. 
And as you get more careful with your speech, of course that means you're going to be more careful with the things you say to yourself in your mind. That becomes an important part of your meditation, the questions you ask, the answers you give, the encouragement you give yourself when the things are down, the warnings you give yourself when you start getting complacent. This is all a matter of speech. Discernment is a matter of speech as well. You see things and you understand. You have to ask questions in order to gain discernment. So learning how to speak in line with right speech on the outer level is going to give you valuable lessons on how to deal with it in the inner level, because you want to think things that are true and beneficial and timely. So don't overlook the, the precepts. Once when John Sawat was teaching back east, he was leading a meditation retreat. At the end of the retreat, they asked him, well, how do we carry the practice into our lives? And he said, observe the five precepts. Now, some of the people who heard that were upset. They thought that he meant that lay people can't practice meditation seriously in, in daily life. But as, as John Suat said, that's not the case. Observing the precepts is an important way, important way of developing your mindfulness, your alertness, your right efforts, all of these are elements that you're going to need in your meditation. And engaging in right speech makes you honest. When you're honest outside, then you can be honest inside. And that's when you can see your defilements for what they really are. So don't overlook those precepts. We take them every week for a purpose, to remind you that this is the foundation for the practice. Once the foundation is good, then you can build up many stories on top of it. You don't have to be afraid they're going to fall down. <laughs>